Now, we still have a bunch of charges here, so maybe these are not our final products. Nature doesn't like charges. If there's some way that we can continue going through reactions to get rid of these charges, nature would be glad to do that. So we have to ask, can we predict what reaction might happen now? Now, the reaction that's going to happen next is a very standard type of reaction that we've seen many examples of. Can you predict what, what type of mechanism or reaction might happen here now? How might these species now react with each other? Uh, the, uh, the bromine's going to attack. The oxygen, the uh, the, it's gonna, the the negative uh, bromine is going to attack the positive oxygen. Let's show the arrows for that. Don't forget the positive charge on the oxygen. The charges are the most important part of the picture. Now that's a very reasonable guess. That turns out to be incorrect. We're going to have to take a step back here. Now what basically you were saying is that, well, who, who do you think here is going to be the nucleophilic atom? The bromine. The bromide. And who are you saying is going to be the electrophilic atom? The oxygen. The oxygen. Now those seem like good guesses, but there's a complication that we're going to go, have to go back and review here. When something has a positive charge, do you think that makes it electrophilic or nucleophilic? Electrophilic. Electrophilic. Now, there's something we haven't had a chance to talk about. Actually, a positive charge either makes an atom electrophilic or it makes the atom it's attached to electrophilic. This is something we haven't had a chance to talk about. The positive charge on this X atom either will make the X electrophilic or it might make the Y electrophilic. Sometimes the positive charge makes the X an electrophile, and sometimes it makes the Y an electrophile. How can you tell the difference? Well, if the atom has a full octet already, then actually it's the atom that's attached to that's going to be the electrophile. And the atom with the positive charge is just going to be the leading group. If you have a full octet, the positive charge doesn't make you into an electrophile. It makes the atom that you're connected to into the electrophile. So the electron pushing arrows in this case would look like this. The nucleophile is not going to attack the X. It's going to attack the Y. And then the X is just going to be a leading group. On the other hand, if the X has an incomplete octet, then it can be the electrophile. And then the electron pushing arrows look like this. Then we just need to have a nucleophile come in and attack the X. Most people don't realize this, but this is going to be an important idea for the whole rest of the course. You have to check whether the positive charge is making the atom or the atom it's attached to into the electrophile. Well, that depends on whether you have a full octet or not. And something we can do to simplify this is there's really only one important example of an atom with a positive charge and incomplete octet. Maybe the only example of this is carbocations. We know that carbocations have positive charges and an a, uh, incomplete octet. But that's really the only example, almost the only example you'll see. So almost any other case besides a carbocation, the positive charge makes the adjacent atom into the electrophile. And it just makes the X into the leaving group. So unless you have a carbocation, for any non-carbocation, we're almost always going to be in this case, where it's the adjacent atom that's the electrophile. Well, which case are we in over here then? Is the oxygen going to be the electrophile or the atom is attached to? That's right. This has a complete octet, so it's the atom it's attached to that will be electrophile. Or an easier way to see this is, this is not a carbocation. But we just learned that unless you have a carbocation, the positive charge doesn't make the atom into an electrophile. It makes the adjacent atom into the electrophile. So who's the bromine going to attack? The carbon, not the oxygen. Your first guess seemed very logical, because we haven't gone over this idea yet. But this will be important for the rest of the course. And what role is the oxygen going to play? It's going to play the role of a leaving group. 
Because positive charges don't just make things electrophilic, they can also make them into good leaving groups. You can see that a leaving group is somebody who leaves and takes electrons with it. Well, this would be glad to take the electrons with it to get rid of this positive charge over here. In fact, now we can call this the alpha carbon because this is the leaving group. We're basically saying that this carbon over here is going to be our alpha carbon. I'll go ahead and forget some numbers. One, two, three, four. It doesn't really matter whether we show the bromine attacking the number three or the number two because they're symmetrical here. But theoretically, the bromine could attack the number two as well because that's also an alpha carbon. Now that we've got these electron pushing arrows in there, we should be able to draw the products. So let's draw the products here. Okay. Who is the number one attached to? The number two. And who's the two attached to? To the uh, intra oxygen. And who's the oxygen attached to? Um, nothing. It's it's attached to the hydrogen. Oh, excuse me. I think you left out that hydrogen. I did. So that gives us this hydrogen here, and then you got this product current. What type of mechanism did we draw here? Um, this is an, uh, an SN2. That's right. But we really should check to make sure that was right. We have to make sure that this really would be SN2. So let's use the table and see where would we be in our table. Here. We're on the primary carbon. Right. So we're in the second row. And we're in the, 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 the negative right of bromide. That's right. That's the column that's labeled weak base. And so the mechanism should be SN2. Which confirms what we had here all along. But we have to watch out for that. Suppose we had been on a tertiary carbon, what would the mechanism have been? Uh, uh, if we were on a tertiary, it probably would have been in. Let's see here. Let's just, it would uh, be an SN1. That's right. Because the big obstacle to SN2 is steric hindrance. We can't do SN2 on a tertiary. But here we didn't have a tertiary, so we could do the SN2. But we have to watch out this could have been SN1 if there was more steric hindrance. So we have to watch out for those ideas. We don't need to worry about E2 here because this is not a strong base. Correct. But it could be either SN2 or SN1. Did we give you the reactivity handouts? I don't think so. So here's our reactivity handout. So this goes over this important idea that positive charges don't always make you into an electrophile. Mm -hmm. They only make carbocations into electrophiles. Otherwise, they make the thing that you're attached to into okay. the electrophile. That's an important That's idea that a lot of people don't realize. Now, what type of functional group did we start with here? We started with ether. Right. We made an alcohol in the in halo alkane. That's right. Remember that when you learn about new functional groups, there's two phases. You learn how to make it, and then you learn what you can do with it. Well, we learned one important way to make ethers, which was the Williamson ether synthesis. There's other important, there's other ways too, but uh, we got a lot of stuff to cover, so I just covered what I thought was most important. And now we're learning something very important that you can do with ethers, which is that you can react them with this reaction to make an alcohol and a halo alkane. So then you must be able to make an ether from a, an alcohol. Let's see. There are ways to make ethers from alcohols. Okay. That's right. We haven't covered that. We only went over how to make ethers from alkoxides. I don't know if we'll have time for that other reaction, but that's right. Although, it's not, al it's not always the case that reactions are reversible, but there is a way in which this is reversible. Okay. In any case, we just wanted to learn about this key reaction here. Now, do things with positive charges tend to be Nucleophiles or electrophiles? Electrophiles. It's 
So things with negative charges tend to be nucleophiles. How about what, what makes something into a good leaving group? A positive charge or a negative charge? Positive charge. Because what does the leaving group lead, do? When it leaves, it takes the electrons with it. Well, who wants to take electrons with it? Something with a positive charge. So a positive charge can do two things. It can make something electrophilic, or it can make it into a leaving group. We saw that originally we thought the positive charge was making this oxygen electrophilic, but it was really make the making the carbon electrophilic, and it was making the oxygen into a good leaving group. Okay. 